In today's video, we'll be taking everything we learned in part one and part two to paint this floral composition. I'll be showing you the individual elements and different brush strokes I use for this composition, as well as giving you some tips and pointers along the way. This is part three of my Intro to Watercolor series. Let's paint. Okay, for today's video, I'll be using an Arteza A5 uh, sketchbook, my Winsor Newton Professional palette, my Winsor Newton Series 7 round four, round size four brush, and this mason jar of water. Um, and we'll be using some of the brush strokes and techniques we learned in the previous video to paint some flowers. So before we do that, um, we will be practicing some of the elements that we'll be using today. Uh, so for this, I'll be using a green. So I think this is Winsor Newton Olive Green. And also a pink mixture. So here I'm going to mix the Carmine Red with a touch of the yellow okra. So it gives it a nice kind of warm pinky color. So we'll try a petal first. So remember the kind of swoopy C type stroke that we did in the previous video? We'll be using that today to create some petals. So if you take a little bit of the pink on your brush and you go onto your paper and you do a swoop, got a very basic kind of petal here and it's quite a perfect little shape. So what I like to do for my petal is to kind of create a more organic feel nothing in nature is perfect, is add some strokes to the side. So it kind of has some bits coming off. So you see there, it's a little more edgy. Now for my petals, sometimes what I like to do to create some depth is to add a bit of a darker color on the inside of the petal while it's still wet. So before that petal has a chance to dry, what I'll do here is use using a similar mixture, but with less water so that it's darker. I'm gonna tap the inside of the petal. Kind of create that shadowy, that shadowy look. So we'll do another panel. Maybe instead of pointing this way, we'll point that way this time. So we'll do a swoop. And then just add a few bits to the side so it doesn't look too straight. And then I will again, while it's still damp, use a tiny bit of the darker pigment and that shadow. Great, so feel free to practice a few more times. I'm just gonna do one more, maybe going downwards. Okay, so those are some of the petals. We'll also be painting some basic leaves. Taking a bit of the olive green on my brush, I will paint a thin line and I will create a few kind of branches coming off of the main line. Then I'll use the half C stroke that we used in the previous video create a leaf. So touch, press, and lift. Touch, press, and lift. Okay, let's just do that one more time, but this instead of going up, we'll go down with this branch. So painting down this way. A lot, a branch from the middle, and then a couple just kind of coming out. And using brush 
press down and create the leaves. So those are the two core elements of what we'll be using in our floral piece. So now that we've practiced these, let's move on to the real thing. So we'll be painting a few flowers with some leaves coming outwards. So taking whatever color it is you want to use for your flowers. So I'll be again mixing the carmine red with sort of the red aqua. I'm going to paint a few petals. So I'm going to put one flower here, one here, and one here. I'm going to use a rather kind of light shade for this. I'm going to be painting a four petal flower. Just, so if you're doing the same at home, make sure you leave enough space to create Four petals. Great, so that's my flower done. We have the general shape of it. Now, while it's still wet, I'm going to add a darker shade of the same color into the center so that it creates a blooming effect that adds a bit of shadow. It's going to make a slightly darker mix. So taking the darker color on my brush, I'm going to tap the inside of the petal like that. usually best to tap in the direction that you want it to go. So for example, for this petal that goes this way, I'm going to kind of tap in a downward, downward uh, motion. It encourages the uh, paint to kind of flow that way. Now remember, because it's still wet, you can manipulate the paint a bit with your brush. I would avoid doing it too much, but if it's not maybe moving into the places you want it to, you can you can, you know, move it around a little bit. Okay, cool. Now, one thing to note as well about student paper versus artist quality paper. Artist quality paper, because it's cotton, holds that water just that little bit longer, so you have more time to work with it. We are using student quality paper here, so it will dry faster. Um, so I wanna create some kind of soft blends with the, sorry, soft bleeds with the leaves. So while, before I move on to the next, uh, flower. I'm going to add a branch coming off the flower, maybe this way. So taking the green on my brush, I'm going to tap this petal. You see there now it's kind of created that blooming effect. I'm just going to paint a short branch off this way and paint my leaves. So that's one flower done. We're gonna move on to the next one. We're just gonna do the exact same thing. Creating another four petal flower. Just opening straight up at me. And before it has a chance to fully dry, I'm going to add the bit in the middle. And again, before this has a chance to dry, I'm going to add a couple of leaves. I'm going to add one leaf here. I'm just going to add a leaf rather than a branch. Little branch coming off this way. Cool. 
Oh, let's paint our last, our last flowers. We're gonna pop this guy here. Also, if you're doing this at home, you may see I'm not moving my notebook. It's just so it's easier to film. You can feel free to maneuver your notebook however which way, or your paper. So it's easiest for you to easiest for you to paint. There's no need to do what I'm doing. It's just it's easier from a filming perspective. Last petal here. Cool. And again, just repeat the darker color in the middle. Um, and again, just while this is still a bit damp, I'm gonna add um, a leaf coming off this way. Go back around and add some more branches to balance our piece out. With the leaves, you can vary the opacity if you'd like. It creates just a little more interest maybe um, than if all the leaves were the same color. That's up to you and the effect you want. Totally okay to paint over stuff you've already painted if that's what you want to do. So here I'm just going to paint a leaf here over the flower because that's why I wanted to put a leaf there. So totally fine. Just go around till you're done and happy with the leaves that you've got. So I think I'm just gonna add a few more light ones to create kind of layers to our piece. One here, uh, maybe a light one here, and here. I don't always plan my pieces out, so I kind of just go with the flow. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. The last thing we're gonna do is add some of the yellow to the center of uh, the flowers. We didn't practice this in the techniques, but all we're really gonna do is with some of the yellow on the brush, um, you're just gonna kind of dab the centers. So we're gonna poke, poke, poke. I like poking as opposed to kind of painting it on, I think it creates a slightly more natural effect. Um, I like the kind of space it creates between the paint marks, and that's why I do it that way. That's why it's a little bit of texture, I think, because you know when you when you kind of touch the brush, it creates a slight pool of water wherever you touch. So when it dries, it has slightly variation, slight variations in how the paint looks and that is it. That is your finished piece. A very simple, very basic floral piece, um, but it gives you a sense of how you can combine some different techniques, the different brush strokes, and use color and paint to create shadow, different opacities, all in one piece. So I hope you found that fun, hope you found that useful, a good way to kind of get your brush going. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all on my channel again soon. Bye.